I test one, two, one, two. Father God who art in heaven, thank you very much for this day. Thank you for the beautiful Sabbath and thank you for the privilege to be gathered like this. It is because we have peace around us that we're able to convoke in your name. We pray that you feel free to have your way amongst us today, that we will worship you in truth and in spirit, that everyone who has come to your presence today will not leave unless they are touched by you. 
We pray that you take charge of today's program from the very start to the end of today's worship. Thank you for answering our prayers this much, for we know we'll have bountiful testimonies from everything that will be done from here today. From the song service, to the ministration, to the children's story, your name alone will be glorified. We are grateful for all that you've done, for we pray all of these in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. And a very happy Sabbath to you. I also want to use this opportunity to welcome those viewing us online on YouTube and also on Freedom South Television. We are glad that you've taken time to be a part of worship today. We know God is here. We recognize his presence here. And everyone who has come believing that they have come to worship God and not man will leave here blessed and transformed by the power that has the ability to transform us from all of our uh, infirmities. Today we have um, a beautiful worship service and we will have good singing with Abla, Carlos and myself also assisting with the song service and of course the one with the magic finger, Michael, playing the, the piano for us. We know that as we sing, the Lord will also allow us to sing harmoniously to the glory of his name. I'd like to also give you a gentle reminder that when we sing, especially when the congregation is also singing with us, please use your nose mask so that we can stay healthy and stay safe. Yeah, we would also have the children's story. However, a little tweak to the program today, the one who will be preaching for us would also be telling the children's story. So kids, get ready for the children's story. And um, yeah, we would be blessed by the children's story. Uh, we would have time to pray as our custom is, and we would have the sermon today. The sermon is entitled, The Best or the Rest. And the one who will be telling the sermon unto us this day is no other than Steffi Wiesner. She is the head of the financial department in our institution here, Fred and Adventist University, and she's going to minister unto us. We pray that the Lord will use her greatly, even as we stay ready to be blessed by her ministration. With all of that said, I'd invite the church to rise at this moment as we take our first song for today. It is from the German hymnal, I think 368. It is entitled, You Are My All in All. Let us rise as we sing.
we take the last stanza again. Bearing my guilt, my sin, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my own. Crucified Lord, redeem my King, joyfully now my praise I ring, you are my holy Lord, Jesus, Lamb of God, what is your can sit down and we like to pray together but I want to say some words before so that you can pray and uh, we will finish the prayer so we we like to have in our service a prayer time and uh, it is good to have this time also in our service and uh, I want to remember you that uh, we have a special situation in this world we live in war we see the changing of clim climax and we see that the needs in the world more and that um, we have a lot of things where we can ask God. And uh, I will also uh, that we pray for those who will come to Friensau. And uh, in the middle of uh, September, it starts with the uh, theology students, and then the German class starts in September. And in October, the new students comes, and the one year for Jesus comes also, so that we are more than 70 new students here on campus. So without one year for Jesus team, there are also nine person. And uh, please pray for those who are looking for visum, and uh, so it's everything works out that they can come. Today we have uh, uh, visitors from Kenya, that are the parents of Robinson. Welcome to Friensau, and we hope you feel well here. And uh, also we have one new student, he's still here, Mate. And he is with his family here, and uh, in the first year he learns German, and then he will study counseling. So. You will join us also a long time here in Friensau. Welcome to Friensau. And uh, that is what I see at the moment. And I'm happy that Steffi is, uh, have the sermon and the children's story is included in the sermon. Don't be surprised, yeah? And uh, look, because it's in the beginning something and in the end something. So, and... Uh, Now we take time, two minutes. You s sit by yourself, you pray, and you bring things to God to ask him for things so that uh, in your, in your uh, around you can pray, but think also to those and for all the world situation that God lead us with his spirit. So we take time, please sit, and I will finish the prayer 
with a loud prayer. Thank you, Father, for this Sabbath. Thank you that we can come together. We trust in you. And we see this world, the struggles, and we see also struggles in our own life. And we see that you help us through everything. And you show us what is really important in this world. Let us see where we can help. Let us see where our words and work is needed. Let us understand that we live not for ourselves, let us understand that you gave your life, Jesus, for us so that we can live now and in eternity. Let us understand in what a time we are living. And let us understand what is important in this time. And we pray for those who will come to Friedensau soon, that they find here a place where they can study, work, and build a future, and to get a perspective also for your kingdom. I pray for those who are in struggle, please give them help. I pray for those who are in financial struggle, please give a way out. And I pray for those who are in spiritual trouble. Let them know that you are here every time and that you can fill the heart with peace and with everything what we need. Thank you that we can come every time to you. And thank you for this service. Let this service be a blessing so that our heart get filled with your thoughts and that we can get direction for our life as it is your will. That we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now is the time to take some announcements for, for worship today. Just to remind us that for next Sabbath, we will be having a combined service and it will hold at 10 a.m. So the Germans and the international, members of the international church will have to meet to have their service together by 10 a.m. next Sabbath. Um, we have a need for someone to help with the video. Why Sebastian takes care of the audio. So if you think you can help, please register with Dietmar and we hope to have a beautiful service next Sabbath. Please do well to come in time and I believe God will bless us as he normally does. We also have our potluck today as the custom is. However, we'll have a change of venue. We will be meeting at Stutt today because we have repairs going on there. So we will be meeting today at 1.30 uh, at Corn in the basement. Do not forget, 1.30 today at Corn. Well, as I said earlier, the kids' time should normally take place now, but we'll be having the kids' time alongside the sermon. So right now, I would encourage each one of us to get ready as we sing another song to the glory of God's name. And this time, we are singing from the Seventh Day Adventist Hymn now, 530. 530. Five, Please don't forget to use your nose marks when you sing. Thank you, and God bless you. Oh 
You may be seated. A Bible reading for today is from Mark chapter 12. I'll be reading from verse 41 to verse 44. If you have your hard copy Bibles, kindly flip the pages of your Bible to Mark chapter 12, 41 to 44. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much, that one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, a whole livelihood. May the Lord bless the reading of this word and also bless the listener in Jesus' name. Amen. We get into that time of the service when we hear God speak to us through his vessel. And as earlier introduced today, Steffi Wiesner will be preaching unto us. We would like to have a come up stage. Probably just ask one or two questions. Do we have the second mic? Okay, we can use that. Thank you. Well, good morning and happy Sabbath once again. Morning. I, many of us don't really know you. For example, I've been here for two years and some months, and I can say that, yeah, maybe I see you once in a while, but I don't really know you. So for somebody who doesn't really know you, who really are you? Okay, so, yeah, my name is um, Steffi Wiesner. I am living and working here in Friedensau since um, June last year. Okay. And um, I grew up in East Germany cool. in an um, yeah, atheist family, like it was normal. Okay. And um, I became an Adventist through um, Friedensau Bible Correspondence School, okay. actually. And um, I was, now I am baptized more than 30 years ago. Praise so God. <laughs> Quite a long time, and then I studied math, computer science, and economics. Okay. And um, then was called to serve as a treasurer okay. for the Northern Rhenish Westphalian Conference. Beautiful. I worked there for 12 years. Then I was called to work at our media center, okay. Hope Media Europe, and worked there for five years. And now I'm here for more than a year at Friedenso. Wow. So if you didn't know her, now you know her. <laughs> if you looked at her as one small young woman, now you say she's small but mighty. We are privileged to have you today to yes. preach unto us. And now you said you are at the financial department yes. working. I think that's one of the most important departments for students and for staff. Because if they don't do their duties really well, we don't get paid. <laughs> Thank you for doing your job so well. So she will be preaching unto us today. Our sermon today is entitled, The Best or the Rest. I'm thinking, maybe by the end of today's sermon, you would answer whether you are the best or you are just part of the rest. I don't know how the sermon would go, but one thing I'm sure of is that God will speak to us through her ministration. Please, the stage is yours. I was given a gentle reminder to pray with you. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your servant that you would be using this moment to minister grace unto us. It is our prayer that you will empty our self and fill us with your spirit. Let every word that will come from our mouth be that which will glorify your name and edify the church. We are in dire need of your word. Please, Lord, speak your word to us through the verse you have chosen this day. I believe that by the time the sermon is over, we would leave you transformed by the power of your word. Thank you for answering our prayers this day. For we pray these in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior. And let God's people say, Amen.
As was said before, um, I will start with the story. It's for the children, but it's also for the adults. There was um, a man who had nothing. And God saw this man, and he loved him. And so God decided to give him 10 apples, three apples for food, and then um, three apples for clothing and for housing. And then three apples for all the other needs we have in life. And then he gave him a tenth apple um, so that man could show gratitude to God. And the man was very happy. And so he used three apples for food. And then three apples for clothing and housing. and then three apples for all the other needs he had. And then he thought, <clears throat> God doesn't need my tenth apple. He has all the apple trees in the world. So he used the last apple for himself. And gave God. Now you might think, okay, what does this have to do with our sermon today? We heard um, the, the reading of the text from Mark 12. And I want to take you into this um, situation a little bit. Just so that you yeah, can, um, in your head, that you have a picture of what is happening here and in which context. It is um, a few days before the crucifixion. It's um, the last week of um, Jesus' ministry before he was crucified. And um, Jesus came to Jerusalem. He was um, worshipped by many people. He came there and um, then he went um, out of the city. Then next day he came back and... Um, there, if you um, go in your Bible a few chapters before, you see that, okay, then um, there are some, some stories where, um, yeah, where we think, wow, what's Jesus doing here? Like, he cleanses the temple, he throws out um, all the um, people who are selling and, yeah, stuff their mo change money. We have the story of the withered fig tree, and yeah, then Jesus' authority is questioned. There's the question of the Pharisees, is it lawful to pay taxes? There's the question, okay, what is the highest command? And Jesus is teaching the people about um, the scribes and the Pharisees and that they should beware of them. And then Jesus is taking a break. And he's sitting down opposite the treasury. And if you imagine this, um, you want to give an, an offering, small donation. Um, I mean, we do it here usually when we leave um, the room. And Jesus is standing nearby and watching you. And watching how much money you put into the offering. I don't know if this was common, but um, 
What we know when we read the story here, it says, okay, yeah, Jesus is sitting down there, and he saw that many rich people put in a lot of money. I would say, praise the Lord. As a treasurer, I'm always glad when I see um, in the donation account, 1,000 euros, 5,000 euros, 10,000 euros. I even had um, instances in uh, my ministry where there were people who once even gave half a million for her local church. Yeah, and um, so you say, yeah, that's a lot of money. You can really do something with this. And then there are the regular donations of yeah, 10 euros, 5 euros, 20 euros. And we think, we can't do much with this. This is how we think. And I mean, it's correct. If we, um, of course, with 10,000 euros, we can pay someone for maybe um, two and a half, three months. With 10 euros, we can't even pay minimal wage for one hour. So many people who were rich put in much. This is just a description here, no interpretation. And then it says, then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrants. What's a quadrants? Do you have any idea um, about which value we talk here? This widow who comes, she gives two mites. The Greek word there is um, lepton. A lepton was the smallest Greek copper coin during this time. And then it says here, okay, and two lepta make one quadrants. One quadrants was the smallest Roman copper coin during this time. And one quadrants was one sixty-fourth of a dinar. And a dinar was um, the daily wage of a day laborer. So what it means that this widow gave in one sixty-fourth of the wage of a day laborer. So when we um, now compute this in our days, right now in Germany, this would mean, okay, if you only get minimum wage, that would be 10 euro 45 cents per hour, and you, you say, okay, for a day, so eight hours, then this would mean that you get um, 83 euros and 60 cents. And if you divide this by 64, then you get the amount what this widow put into the offering. And this, but 60, um, 83 euros and 60 cents divided by 64 is one euro 31. One euro 31, that's an amount of money you can buy something. If we would translate it this like just, okay, she put in one cent. Yeah, because that's the smallest coin we have right now. One cent, you can do nothing with one cent. It doesn't matter if you have one cent or not, you cannot buy anything for one cent. But one euro 30, if you are really poor, you can buy something to eat. A few, um, um, a few um, scones, something like this, a little bit of bread, maybe small cheese, or you could get a, a yogurt and um, yeah, a small bread uh, at Aldi. You could eat something. And this is what this widow gave. And what's also interesting in the story is that it says, okay, she put in two mites, two lepta. So she had two coins. She could decide, okay, one coin for me to buy at least a little bit of food and one coin for God. But she decided, no, both coins for God. That's 
the description of what happens here. And then Jesus is calling his disciples and now he tells them what he sees. And he says, assuredly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood. Jesus is interested in what we give. Jesus teaches a lot about money and possessions and about our relationship with money and possessions. Some people who counted it, I didn't do it, so I'm not 100% for, sure, um, for certain, but some people who counted it, they say that he teached more about money and possession than about faith and prayer combined. Because money is important in our life. We need it to survive, but money also shows who is the Lord in our life. And Jesus, he doesn't see here just the, the monetary value of the offering. But he sees what this offering means in relation to, yeah, the whole wealth a person has. And Jesus is interested if our first love goes to people and to God or to possessions. When we look here, we see in verse 31, Jesus sees people. Um, the next verse after the story we read is um, then verse 1 in chapter 13. And there we see what the disciples see. Teachers see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. The disciples see possessions, see buildings, see stones. Jesus sees people. What do we see? What do we worry about? What do we value? Where do we see real wealth? In possessions, like the world? Or in relationships? Our relationship with God and our relationship with our fellow human beings? And Jesus is interested about where we are looking for heaven. In um, 1 Timothy 6, Paul writes to, yeah, to Timothy, one of his yeah, of the young um, leaders of the church he, t he taught, And he writes there in um, 1 Timothy 6, um, I'm starting with verse 17, command those who are rich in this present age not to, be ha not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. It's not bad to be rich. It's not bad to put a lot of money into um, the treasury. But it's bad to put your trust in money. It's bad to search heaven in possessions because you will not find it there. And Jesus is interested who gets the leftovers, the rest, or who gets 
the best. We see here that this widow, she gave two mites. In today's world here in Germany, it would be, okay, she gave one euro 30. And Jesus says, this was a sacrifice. The rich people, they donated money. They gave donations, that's fine. But the widow, she sacrificed. I don't know your situation, but I know myself, and usually when I donate money, yes, I'm giving a donation. Sometimes, in the past, it was a sacrifice, but right now, when I see um, the, the total on my bank statement, then I know that that's what I give God. Yeah, it's a donation. And it's good, it helps, but it's not a sacrifice. And yeah, one thing is money, but we have other areas in our life. What gets God of your time? The leftovers or the best? How often? I go to bed tiredly and then I take a few minutes, okay, to pray. So God only gets the leftovers of my time. Or do I give him the best of my time when I'm really awake and energized, when I can focus on him? Who gets the leftovers? And who gets the best? Part two of the children's story. There once was a man who had nothing. God saw this man and he loved him. And so he gave him 10 apples. Three apples for food. And then three apples for clothing and housing. And then three apples for all the other things in life. And then God gave him a tenth apple so that the man could show God his credit, gratitude. And the man was happy. And so he used three apples for food. And three apples for clothing and housing. But because the man loved God, he opted for the simpler lifestyle so that he only needed two more apples to um, fulfill his, his needs. So in the end, he had two apples left to show God his gratitude. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are our Lord and creator. And you gave us everything we have and everything we are. And Lord, we ask you to help us to put you and our fellow human beings first. Help us to give you the best in every area of our life and not just the leftovers. Because when we invest the best into your kingdom, 
we will be blessed and other people will be blessed because your kingdom will grow here in this earth so that when you come, many, 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 many people will go to heaven so that heaven will be full. So Father, help us here on this earth to already live in this reality of your kingdom. Help us to really give our lives to you so that we, like this poor widow, that we really trust in you and not in our possessions. Thank you that you are changing our way of thinking to your way of thinking. In the name of Jesus, amen. The best or the rest. I don't want to be judgmental, but I hope that many of us who sit in the congregation today try to give God the best and not just the rest. Like they always say, uh, when it comes to stewardship, it is about your relationship with God and your level of trust in God. I pray that God will help us as individuals to always give our best and not just the rest to God. God has given us so much. The financial resources and all of the resources he has given unto us is his gift for us. And what we do with what he has given us is our gift back to him. He has blessed us with life, with resources, manpower and whatever we have in our disposal. He's waiting on us to give our best back to him. My prayer for each one of us today, as the preacher already prayed, is that we will be selfless and show more trust in what God expects of us and what God gives unto us so that we can be stewards unto honor when the time of reckoning comes. Thank you one more time for the sermon. We are blessed to have been given the reminder of what we ought to do as people called by God. Having said all this, we'd like to bring the sermon, the service to a close by taking our last song for the day from the Seventh Day Adventist Hymnal 493, Fill My Cup, Lord. I'd encourage us to rise to our feet, use our nose marks, and sing like you really mean it. Amen.
song is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of today's service, and we are glad that you have taken time to be a part of worship today. I believe we have been blessed. You have been blessed. Online viewers have been blessed, and those viewing on Freedom South Television have been blessed by the words from the throne of grace this day, given to us by Steffi Wiesner. We want to roll out a vote of thanks to everyone who made the service what it is, the technical department, the sound leaders, the keyboardist, and the beautiful congregation here at Freedom Cell. Thank you for making today's worship a beautiful one, a memorable one. I believe heaven is happy with us that we have convoked on a day like this to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Next week, let's not forget that we will be having a combined service, making a time with us, and we will also be blessed as God always does. Let's not also forget that by 1.30 today, we'll meet for potluck at Con in the basement. Let's eat together, because it's also part of worship. Having said all this, let's not also forget to drop whatever God has laid in our heart, the best of the best, when we go to our various homes. Don't give God just the rest. Give him the best. And I hope to lead by example. Having said all that, finally, we'll bring the service to a close as we take the benediction. Father, as we go today, we go in your strength and in your might. We do not know what the week holds, but we believe that you are the God who knows tomorrow, even from today. We go trusting that you will take absolute control of everything about us, the big things, the small things in this week. Whatever that we will do that will not bring glory to your name, please, Father, give us the strength not to do them. The little things that matter to you, that will bring glory to your name, help us to have this tendency to do them. And most importantly, help us to show kindness 
to the people around us. Help us to be the light to the world around us. And help us to always live the best of our lives for you. For you have given us life. And what we do with our life is our gift back to you. Help us to give you a living sacrifice and not a dead one. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us now and forevermore. And let God's people say, Amen. It is time for our last song, song number 214. We have this hope. Shall we all rise as we sing? We have this hope that bonds Yeah.